Well, good morning, City Impact Church. It's Sunday morning again, and uh, we're going to be <clears throat> talking this week about unmasking deception. Unmasking deception. You know, the, the horrible thing about being deceived is you don't know you're deceived, right? And I know that's cliche, but it's the truth. That's why it's cliche. And uh, so this morning I want to talk about unmasking deception or how God can help us to not be deceived. And uh, we're taking our, our verse from James again, James 1, 22. It says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And so we can deceive our own selves. And it's so important that we understand how this happened. How do I deceive my own self? What would cause me to deceive my own self? And, uh, you know, a lot of times we, we don't even understand the whole concept of this. But in James 1.26, he explains it. He says, if any man among you seem to be religious... And bridle it not his tongue, but deceive it his own heart. This man's religion is in vain. Now we're getting a little bit more of an insight how we can deceive ourselves. He said, you're deceiving your own heart by the words that you speak. And so we can take something as truth and speak it to ourselves and declare it to ourselves. And our heart will believe us. And we're going to explain that a little bit more too. But And then see, deception is taking a lie, hearing it and hearing it and hearing it till it becomes a truth. That's deception. And we can deceive our own selves by speaking a lie to ourselves. And you know, your self-talk is huge. You, I, I've seen people that, that will allow lies that people have spoken over them to become truth. And I'll give you an example for myself. Growing up, you know, our whole family, there was a lot of guys that drank and alcohol was a big thing and they were all alcoholic. And there was always old cars all beat up in the backyard. And so I grew up saying, well, our family, we're all alcoholics. And so I'm going to be an alcoholic. And I was deceiving my own selves because the Bible says that I can be free and I'm under the blood of Jesus and I don't have to be bound by anything but I was deceiving my own heart into speaking a lie to it until it became truth. And then what's the worst about it is you'll begin living the lie because you believe it to be truth. And then it will be real in your life, although it's not the truth of God's word. And so the Bible's very clear. We need to bridle our tongue. We need to, we need to find out what the Word says and speak that to ourselves, not what the world is saying. If you're going to the world, we saw this a few weeks back, if you're going to the world, you're going to broken people to try to speak into your life to make you whole, that's never going to happen because they're speaking from a place of brokenness. And so they can, you, brokenness cannot bring wholeness. You need wholeness to get whole. So you need a whole God to bring wholeness to you. And so you have to get words from the Word of God and speak them to yourself. I, I had somebody tell me that, you know, God began to speak to them to speak good things over themselves and they wouldn't do it. It felt weird. It felt awkward. Why? Because they'd been living a lie for so long that truth seemed awkward. And there's a saying that I have here and it's this, it's, it's, uh, if the, if the truth makes you uncomfortable, don't get upset at the truth. Get upset at the lie that made you comfortable. Come on. And so once we understand this, we go like, hang on. Why, why, does, why is this making me feel uncomfortable? Why, why is it that it makes us uncomfortable to speak good of others or speak good to others? It's because we believe we've lived the lie and we're comfortable with living the lie that we should razz people and always speak negative over them. When the Bible tells us whatever's good, whatever's pure, whatever's of good report, think on these things and that we are to love one another and that we are to speak truth to our neighbors. And so we have to, first of all, start speaking truth to ourselves before we can speak truth to others. And so I put, when you believe a lie, you deceive yourself. And really, when you believe a lie, you, you are claiming that a lie is a truth. And then you begin to live it because you believe it's true. And so God wants to unmask deception, and he wants to get you to walk in light. The only thing that it can expose a lie is truth, right? Because if you think it's true, 
then you're going to live it as truth. But when real truth comes, it will expose the lie. And then all of a sudden you go, whoa, all these years, all this time, I've been living a lie. I can live above this. I can live a better life than this. I, I can overcome this. I can, do, I can do things I never thought I could do. I can be what I never thought I could be. I can be holy. I can be pure. I can be just. I can be right. I can be all those things. Wow, that's amazing. Well, it all comes when the lie is exposed by truth, and now the truth begins to work on you. And uh, I, put, I put it like this. Truth to a lie is like light unto, dis, unto darkness. And so truth, when it comes, it will dispel the lie. Just like when you turn on a light, darkness cannot say, well, I'm not leaving. Right? When light comes, darkness has to leave. Well, when truth comes, lie cannot stand there anymore. It can't stand in the presence of truth. And so when the truth of God's word comes into our life, exposes the lie, and now I begin to meditate that truth. I begin to speak that truth. I begin to declare that truth. Then the lie is debunked, if that's such a word as that. It, it's gone. It's, 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 it, it has no more place in your life because it's been illuminated and it's been revealed. Praise God. And so John 8, 32 says this, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So how does it make you free? Well, it makes you free by bringing you out of deception and into the light. So the truth that you receive, the truth that comes, that exposes the lie that's in your life, will make you free in that area. Amen. I've seen people that get a truth in an area and they'll, you know, maybe they get a truth that God heals and healing's provided for us and it's one of the benefits that we have that we can walk in healing. And so they'll be healthy, but they, maybe they don't have a truth in the realm of finances and they're always broke and they're always poor and they never give because they don't have a truth there and they're living a lie in that area. So as a believer, you could be a believer for years and yet be deceived in certain areas. There could be certain areas where you're not victorious and you're wondering why is it I'm never victorious in health or why is it I'm never victorious in wealth or relationships or whatever it might be it is because you're living a lie somewhere there is a lie that has crept in there and to you it's become truth now you need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit because the Bible says the Holy Spirit leads and guides us into all truth so the Holy Spirit will bring truth to expose the lie to get you out of deception. Can you see how that order works? He brings truth, exposes the lie, brings you out of deception. And so when that process happens, that is where John 8, 32 happens, that you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. It not might make you, it's not you might get free. Once the truth has come and exposed the lie and taken you out of deception, you will walk that path no more. Praise God. Can you see now how God wants to bring truth to you in every area of your life so that you can be free? And that's why the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom because where the spirit of the Lord is there is truth and where truth is lies exposed deception is gone and now you walk in that truth and you walk in freedom hallelujah we're talking about unmasking deception so what the enemy will do he will take a lie and he will cause you to hear it over and over and over. He will cause you to hear it, to see it. And that's why media and all these things that they can bring stuff that is not even truth and you'll believe it. That's how deception happens. And so we need to understand this so that when we, when we are not victorious or an area or where fear has crept in in an area, you need to realize if fear has crept in, it's not of God. Somewhere you've been deceived into believing something that is not truth. So important we understand that fear is not of God. Did you know that? 
<laughs> the Bible says, God says, I've not given you a, fear, a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So wherever fear is, there is a lie, there is no power, there is no love, and there's not a sound mind or a mind that is controlled by the truth. And so fear has come in because a lie has become truth in your life and you're deceived. And so if you have fear, you need to find out where did that fear come from and wherever it came from, whatever thought thought pattern, wherever it came from, you need to ask God to bring truth and life to you in that area and set you free from that deception. Praise God. And so I want, I want to help you this morning to walk a life that is not walked in deception. He said you'll deceive your own heart. You need to bridle your tongue. You need to watch your words. You need to not be speaking stuff that is negative or that is from the pit of hell over yourself. You know, you need to be speaking what the Word says. That's why he says to the one that looks into the Word, sees himself in the Word, and then walks away and forgets what kind of man he was in the Word, is deceiving his own self. And you see people all the time, they see in the Word that it says that they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them, and then they're asked to do so. Well, I can't do that. I'm too stupid. I'm not smart enough. I'm this. I'm that. Stop deceiving your own self. Ask, you're not stupid. Come on, you're made in the image of God and the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. The very wisdom of God is available to you. You're not stupid. And don't let the enemy tell you you are. That's, that's a lie. That's a lie to hold you back. That's a lie to deceive you and keep you. And so you need that lie exposed and kicked out of your life. Praise God. Well, I just want to encourage you this week, you know, live a life without limits. Amen. If you're listening today and, and maybe you, you've... Never asked Jesus into your heart. You've never asked him to be. Maybe you've been lied to. You've been told you're not good enough for God or whatever it might be. I want to tell you, he died for the broken and the hurting and the poor. And he died for every man to be able to be saved. There's nobody that's done anything too bad that they can't be saved. And so all you have to do is believe that he died for you and rose again in your heart, and confess Him as your Lord. So this morning, if you would like to pray with me, I want to tell you, you can start brand new starting today. You can have a new life. Everything can change. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart and confess Him as your Savior, you will be saved. It's that simple. So we're going to pray together if that's you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus. I pray right now, forgive me of my past. From this day forward, Lord, I want to serve you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, we want to welcome you into the kingdom of God. If you're in the Moncton area, come and see us. We're here 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Sunday mornings. If you have children, there's children's ministry in our 11 a.m. service. Be the best one to come. God bless you.